Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider His Holy Word and learn to do the things that please Him. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. So, my sisters, I have an important message for those of you, particularly those of you who are young in faith, about modern myths about modesty. When we become a Christian, of course, we want to walk in obedience to what the Lord commands in his holy word. And the enemy knows that we're not familiar with the scripture yet. And there are many ideas that exist in the world today about modesty that are incorrect. And so we want to get our truth from the word of God and obey the scripture rather than following the doctrines of men. In the religious systems of our time, there are many myths and mistakes about modesty. And the first thing I would say to you is that being modest all by itself will not save you. If you are, for example, you're uh, an Islamist and you are covering your, your head in modesty, well, that isn't salvation. Salvation comes by believing in the name of the only begotten Son of God and being baptized in his name for the remission of sins and being filled with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. That is how salvation comes. So someone who is yet in their sins, who wants to practice modesty, is getting the cart before the horse. And verily, while there are good things that come to people who understand that a woman should be modest and and that modesty is something that women practice even in the heathen lands, it's not salvation. So I want to turn first with you to Leviticus chapter Leviticus chapter nineteen. And let's read in verse 17. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. The Lord says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So if somebody comes to, to me, for example, and they want to learn about modesty, the first thing I must do as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ is to establish whether or not they have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ because if they haven't they are yet in their sins and me assisting them with principles of modesty would be incorrect because it might give them the impression that they're holy on the inside when they're only being holy on the outside so of course Jesus Christ commanded that we should make the inside of the cup clean first. Verily I say unto you, modesty all by itself, it, it's a good thing, but it won't save anyone. And we who are Christians understand that the way to be holy and righteous is to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we obey principles of modesty. It's not loving to tell someone who is baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins that things that are not modest are modest. And there are many religious people who like to make up rules for women about how it is that we dress that are not according to the Holy Scripture. So in particular, the most obvious one is when Pentecostal pastors want to talk to women about how long their skirt should be, and meanwhile, they're telling women that their hair is their covering. That's a very obvious example. We who love the truth want to walk in the truth, and we want to do the things that are pleasing unto God. And there's only one way to know what those things are, and that is to continue in his word. Jesus Christ said, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And this is something that we do every single day, we who are Christian women. So what is it about a woman's body 
that needs to be covered? What parts of our body should we cover? Well, first I want to read in 1 Timothy chapter 2, the commandment, as it is written in the New Testament, that a woman should wear modest apparel. So 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, we read, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. We see that there are two parts to modesty. One is that a woman's flesh and her beauty should be appropriately covered. That's the first thing. And the second thing that we see is that part of modesty is that our clothing should be modest as well. So our, we don't dress in flashy ways. We don't wear fancy de decorative jewelry that cause, calls, pardon me, calls attention to our flesh. Now, if our husband gives us a pretty piece of jewelry and he likes us to wear it when we're in his presence, well, of course, that's a wonderful thing indeed. And I'm not saying at all that it's wrong for a woman to be beautiful and all dressed up in the presence of her husband, or even for a special occasion, such as her wedding, or such as, you know, going to someone else's wedding. Wearing beautiful clothing is not a sin, but it is a sin to wear clothing that is so adorned that all anybody can think about when they're looking at us is how fancy our clothing is. We have modest clothing, which means it's adequate, it's sufficient, and it's not wrong to wear beautiful clothing, beautiful patterns like flowers or, or leaves or, or what have you. It's not a sin to do that, but we would take heed not to overdo it. So a godly person is temperate in all things, and we can recognize the difference between modest apparel and overly fancy apparel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So a woman is commanded to wear modest apparel. Modest apparel includes that she would cover her nakedness, the parts of her body that are sexual, that are for her husband only. We would understand that a woman's beauty is not to be flaunted in the presence of anyone other than our husband. And so we cover ourselves in modesty lest we be behaving like a prostitute who seeks to show everyone in the world what she's got in order to attract those who will, you know, give her money or things that she wants. So a woman doesn't, a Christian woman doesn't use her beauty to manipulate or control. And so we don't look for excuses to be uncovered. In the religious system, however, that we've been brought up to into this time, in this time, pardon me, in the religious system that we were all born into in this time, and we've been brought up in the ways of Rome, we've been taught many wrong things because the devil is a liar. And the devil wants to trick us into thinking we're pleasing God when in fact we are not. We read in Psalm 111 and verse 10, so please turn with me to this passage. And this is something that's written throughout the scripture, but here it is explicit. So this is why I return to the scripture many times when speaking about modesty to those of you who are my system, sisters. Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So we don't figure out what the commandments are, we do them. You see, we read the scripture and we do what it says. And the scripture says that if we do the commandments of God, we will have a good understanding. So there are sometimes situations where a sister will come to me and she will tell me that she is not yet being obedient to, for example, wearing a head covering. She wears it when she you know, goes to a religious gathering and that's it. And the thing is, is that until she's obedient, realizing that her beautiful glory, her hair was not given to her to flaunt in public. Until she's obedient about that, she will not have an understanding. 
a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So the woman's beauty was given to her for her husband. It's for her intimate time alone with her husband. And whether she's married or not, divorced, widowed, it doesn't matter. She covers her head in modesty. Why? Because her hair was not given to her for any other use. So we cover our beautiful bodies and our hair in modesty. Now there are those who will say, that the head covering's just a symbol, and so you put a little button on your head, and that's a covering, or you're covered by your husband, or you're covered by your pastor, or you're covered by something other than a piece of fabric that is given to the woman so that she can cover her beauty and modesty. I want to give you very clearly what the scripture says about what a woman should cover from the Holy Word of God. And the reason I'm giving this to you is particularly because a sister asked me about it. And what I will say to you after this is really important, so please stick with me. In Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1, we read, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Here, God, the only true God, the one true God, the Holy One of Israel, is speaking to the religious system. And he is saying to the religious system that he will not meet them as a man, as a husband would, because they have refused to obey him. They have gone after other gods. They are defiled. They have been proven unfaithful. The daughter of Babylon is a picture of, for example, the Protestant churches, which are the daughters of Rome. So Babylon is that false religious system that has ruled in this world ever since the time of Cain. And it's that religious system that worships the fallen angels and the multiple gods and, and the, the offspring of the fallen angels, the, the, the spirits and the giants, the unclean spirits, and they seek using things like a, a, a woman who calls herself a medium or they look for charms or they look for to know things by looking at the stars and so forth. The ways of the heathen corrupt and it is not something that we as God's people will do. But we understand that when we read in the Old Testament about the people of Israel is that they consistently turned away from serving the only true God and turned instead to worship other gods. Any religion, be it a true religion, the religion of Christianity, which is the bride of Christ. So those of us who are Christians, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Spirit and walking in holiness, we are Christians. Every other religion in the world is corrupted in that it denies that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. It makes Mary into the mother of God and God the Father into just a a co-equal part of something that is referred to as a holy family. That holy family is an unholy thing because it's not the holy family of God, it's the family of Baal, Baalim, Ashtoreth, Baal, and Tammuz. It's the idea of worshiping the sun, the reincarnated sun god, and the mother of that reincarnated sun god, who was Semiramis in Babylon. So the thing is, is that there is one God, and 
Israel departed from worshiping the one true God, as many of God's people these days have been deceived into doing as well. So the false religious system is represented as a woman, but we who are the bride of Christ, we are also represented as a woman. So the bride of Christ is holy inside and out. She is all glorious within, and she is beautiful without. She wears robes of righteousness, clean and white. And this doesn't mean Christian women must wear white all the time. It means that we walk in holiness and righteousness. And the way that we are made clean of our sin is baptism in Jesus' name, is how we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And the blood of the Lamb makes us clean in the eyes of God. We have a clean conscience in the eyes of God. And thereafter, we are able to walk and serve him in holiness. And holiness for a Christian woman means that she would not dress like the whore of Babylon or her daughters. She would dress in modesty. So the way a woman dresses pictures either the unholy whore of Babylon or the holy bride of Christ. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation. Seventeen, and particularly, I want to read one verse here that is describing how the whore of Babylon can be recognized. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So a harlot dresses to enhance her own beauty. A harlot pictures that religious system that is guilty of the blood of the prophets, the blood of the saints, and particularly of the blood of Jesus Christ. The false religious system that seeks to, seeks to usurp power and control from the only true God and his only begotten Son, whom he hath sent. You see, in Jesus Christ we have hope. It is in the blood of the only begotten Son of God that we have hope. And once we've been washed of our sins, our former sins, in the blood of the Lamb, we want to walk in holiness thereafter. And we, who are women, are still women. We still have beautiful parts to our flesh that were intended for our husband. We are not yet resurrected from the dead in the kingdom of God, in wherein there is no difference anymore between male and female. So women are commanded to dress modestly, and we can read in Isaiah 47 the things that would be uncovered if we were shameful. So uncover the locks the hair. Uncover the locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Here we can see there's a difference between the thigh and the leg. The leg is the portion of a woman's body that is below the knee or the knee and below. The thigh is the portion of the leg that is above the knee or the knee and above. There are many these days, because we've been brought up in the age of feminism, who believe that wearing a woman's skirt that reveals part of our leg is modest, simply because there is such an extremity of women being immodesty in the world. Immodest, pardon me. Let me say that again. There's such extremity of women being immodest in this world. Women walking around in short shorts and mini skirts and bikinis and, and, and so forth and so on. But the truth is, is that it, it's a little bit better to be wearing a woman's skirt that covers below the knee, but it's not modest because we see that when God judges the daughter of Babylon and shames her, he uncovers the leg, the thigh, and the rivers. So it says, uncover the thigh, pass over the river. So if your leg is bare and people can see it, my sisters, you're not being modest. 
If your thigh is uncovered, you're not being modest. And if your rivers, which is your secret place, is exposed, you're not being modest. And particularly women who wear pants, be they loose or tight or jeans or some other fabric, be they pink or have flowers or butterflies on them, it doesn't matter. Women's pants cause your secret place to be exposed. It shows the part of your body where your body divides, where your husband might enter in. And I, I'm sorry to be so explicit here, but it's common sense. When you look at a woman who's wearing pants, you can see that part of her body, and it's shameful. So women's pants, of course, are an abomination before God because pants pertain to men. And in the false religious system, we see that that the false religious system seeks to usurp authority that belongs to God alone and give it to other gods. And we see in that system also women usurping authority and calling themselves apostolesses or, or priestesses. That is something that is very displeasing unto God. Women are not called to do those things. Our beauty is for our husband and our service in the body of Christ is that of a woman. The woman was made for the man, even as the bride of Christ was made for Christ. And the woman it, who is behaving properly is a glory to her husband, but he that she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. So a woman who's a Christian who dresses immodestly <clears throat> is shameful. And while we might do these things in ignorance, my sisters, it is my, my task as an aged woman in the body of Christ to be very clear and explicit with you, to not suffer sin upon you. Because if you're exposing any part of your leg to the world, you are not modest. If you are wearing pants, you are not modest. And if your hair is exposed, you are not modest. These are the things that a godly woman covers. Now, the other thing, of course, that we cover is our breasts. And the area around our breasts that entices a man to consider a woman's beauty. So even as, and I'm going to make this very clear to you so you can see it, my sisters. If you went to listen to a man of God, and he was wearing a tank top, and shorts, you would know in your heart that there's something wrong with that. You would be seeing parts of his nakedness that you don't need to be thinking about when you're hearing the word of God. All Christians are commanded to testify, and a godly woman is commanded to testify of the hope that she has in Jesus in a humble, gentle, kind way as women are commanded to be humble, gentle, gentle, and kind. But we are not forbidden to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ, and verily, if we don't, we will not be worthy of Jesus Christ on that day. We can't be a Christian and be ashamed of our Lord. And so when we're dressed modestly, then we can testify of the Lord Jesus Christ, and people won't be thinking about, you know, the portion of our arm our armpit that's right next to our breasts or our beautiful shoulders. Now, the scripture doesn't say that a woman should cover her face with, with a, a, um, a veil over her face or a screen over her eyes. It doesn't say that she must cover her, her neck. It doesn't say that she must cover her arms. But it does say that a woman's beauty was given to her for her husband. And there are parts of a woman's flesh that are clearly set apart for her husband to enjoy. The parts of her body that, of course, would be illegal to expose in this world. So you're not going to go to the grocery store without your shirt on, my sisters. And in like manner, you're going to use the Spirit of God to discern what is holy and what is not. So I can tell you these things, but if you don't do them, you won't understand. You might say something like, well, it's too hot to wear a head covering or to wear a short sleeve shirt as opposed to a tank top. It's too hot to wear a long skirt. It's 
too cold to not wear pants. It, there's all kinds of excuses that come up, and verily, a woman can wear tights or leggings underneath her skirt as underwear. But the truth is this, when it's hot, it's hot anyway. And we cover our flesh in modesty because flesh is not something that glories in the presence of God. A Christian, and a Christian woman particularly, wants people to be thinking about the word of God and the hope that she has in Jesus that is shining forth from her face. She wants people to be thinking about that, not about the decorative thing, nose jewel that she's put on, or her big earrings that are next to her head covering, or wearing things that are clearly not modest. And so the beauty, beauty of a woman should be covered, but I'm not here to make the rules. I'm here to tell you what the scripture clearly says should be covered. The scripture says our legs should be covered. We don't expose our nakedness to the whole world, and that includes our locks. And we walk in holiness, lest we appear to be a whore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I ask you to stick with me, and this is the reason why. Truth is discerned by being obedient to the word of God. When we put on our clothing in the morning, my sisters, the Spirit of God will tell us that we're not dressed modestly if we're not. We will understand by heeding that still small voice within us that what we're wearing isn't modest, and we don't really need to ask anybody about it. So if something's really tight, or if something's kind of see-through, or if something exposes the portions of our flesh that are tender and delicate, we will know deep down inside that it's not modest. And if we choose to do things that are immodest anyway, then confusion will come upon us because we have refused to heed the leading of the Holy Spirit, which speaks through our conscience. So God gave every person a conscience. We know the difference between right and wrong as people. Even if you're not a Christian, you know the difference between right and wrong. And people in the world who give you dirty looks because you're wearing a head covering, it's because they know in their heart, they feel convicted in their heart that you are walking in holiness and there's something wrong with what they're doing. And they hate what you're doing because it exposes what they're doing. And so we're not going to be able to see what is true and right in our behavior if we refuse to heed our conscience. If somebody writes to me and they say, I really want to have a revelation about what the Word of God says about what is immodest and what is modest, the way to have that revelation is to obey Him, to put on your veil, to cover your leg, your thigh, your rivers, my sisters, to cover yourself completely in modesty. And then the Lord will show you what it's okay to show, like your ears or your neck or your hands and wrists and elbows, for example. The Lord will show you, and then you will know for sure. You won't have heard it from me and be in a condition where you're trying to follow Sister Abby's rules, because my rules make no matter whatsoever. It matters as a Christian, that you obey the Lord. And the scripture is so clear that women don't expose their leg, their thighs, their rivers, and any portion of their flesh, including their hair, that is the beauty that God gave them for the pleasure of their husband. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray this message has been a blessing to those of you who have listened to me about this, and I pray that you seek the Lord on these things, and that you begin to obey the parts you do understand, and then the rest will be revealed to you, even as you walk as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen.